Reptiles are one of Earth's most diverse and ancient groups of life, with over 12,000 living species today. But their history stretches back much further than most people realize. Reptiles first appeared 312 million years ago during the late Carboniferous period, and for the better part of their existence, they have dominated the planet. From the towering dinosaurs to the stealthy Pseudosuchians, reptiles have ruled the land, sea, and sky. However, when we think of prehistoric reptiles, dinosaurs often steal the spotlight. But what if I told you there was another group of reptiles, less famous but equally fascinating, that rose to power after the dinosaurs' extinction? These were the Sebacids, a family of terrestrial, crocodile-like predators that became the dominant force during the age of mammals. Today, we'll dive deep into their incredible story, from their humble beginnings to their reign as apex predators, and ultimately, their mysterious downfall. To understand the Sabacids, we need to go back to the beginning. Reptiles first gained prominence during the Triassic period with the Pseudosuchians, a group of archosaurs that included the ancestors of modern crocodilians. These creatures were highly successful, but their reign was eventually overshadowed by the dinosaurs who dominated the planet for an astonishing 165 million years. However, 66 million years ago, the non-avian dinosaurs met their end in a cataclysmic asteroid impact. This event marked the end of the Mesozoic era and the beginning of the Cenozoic, often referred to as the age of mammals. But here's the twist. Mammals weren't the only ones to rise from the ashes. Enter the Sebacids. The Sebacids were a family of terrestrial crocodile-like reptiles that belonged to the Sebacosuchian group. Unlike their aquatic cousins, these creatures were fully land-based predators, and they were about to make their mark on the world. But their story begins long before the asteroid impact. The earliest known Sebacid, Ogresuchus, lived during the late Cretaceous period, around 67.7 million years ago. Discovered in Spain, Ogresuchus was a small, unassuming predator, measuring just one meter in length and weighing about nine kilograms. To put that into perspective, it was about the size of a large monitor lizard. But don't let its size fool you. This little predator was a survivor. Ogresuchus lived in a world dominated by dinosaurs, including theropods like pyroraptor, hadrosaurs, and iguanodonts. In such a competitive environment, Ograsuchus had to be resourceful. Its powerful jaws and sharp teeth made it an effective predator of small mammals, eggs, and even juvenile dinosaurs. But its real advantage was its speed. Unlike modern crocodilians, Ograsuchus had long, upright legs and reduced armor, making it a swift and agile hunter. Despite its small size, Ograsuchus was a formidable predator in its own right. And when the asteroid struck 66 million years ago, it was one of the few reptiles to survive the mass extinction. The survival of Ogresuchus and its relatives was a turning point in the history of life on Earth. In the aftermath of the extinction event, the Sebacids found themselves in a world devoid of large predators. With little competition, they quickly evolved to fill the ecological niches left vacant by the dinosaurs. Within just 500,000 years, Sebacids like Zalmasuchus had already grown three times larger than their Cretaceous ancestors. Measuring around three meters in length, Zulmasuchus became the top predator in its environment, preying on small mammals and amphibians in the rivers and lakes of what is now Bolivia. But the Sebacids didn't stop there. As mammals began to diversify and grow larger, so did the Sebacids. By the late Paleocene, a new giant had emerged, Sebacus. This Sebacid was a game changer. Measuring up to three meters in length and weighing as much as a male spectacled bear, Sebacus was the first Sebacid to be considered a large carnivore. Its deep snout and powerful jaws allowed it to take down prey much larger than itself, including early primates and ungulates. But what truly set Sebacus apart was its teeth. Unlike modern crocodilians, which have rounded teeth for crushing, Sebacus had blade-like, serrated teeth similar to those of tyrannosaurs. These teeth were perfectly adapted for slicing through flesh, making Sebacus a terrifying predator. Sebacus wasn't just a predator, it was a symbol of the Sebacids' growing dominance. But this was just the beginning. 
During the Eocene epoch, the Sebacids reached their peak. The largest and most fearsome of them all was Baranasuchus. This colossal predator was the largest land carnivore since the extinction of the dinosaurs, measuring up to six meters in length and weighing an estimated 1,720 kilograms. To put that into perspective, Baranasuchus was four times heavier than a polar bear. It was the undisputed apex predator of its time, preying on giant mammals like Xenostropotherium and even other carnivores. Barina Suchus wasn't alone in its reign. In Europe, another giant Sebacid, Dentanio Suchus, ruled the land. Although slightly smaller than Barina Suchus, Dentanio Suchus was still a massive predator, measuring up to five meters in length. Its robust skull and powerful teeth allowed it to take down prey weighing over two tons, including early parasodactyls. For millions of years, the Sebacids were the dominant predators on Earth, outcompeting mammals and other reptiles alike. But no rain lasts forever. Around 37 million years ago, the Sebacids began to decline. The exact cause of their downfall is still debated, but it's likely linked to climate change and the breakup of ancient river systems in South America. As the environment changed, many of the large mammals that the Sebacids relied on for food went extinct. Without their prey, the Sebacids couldn't survive. The last known Sebacid, Langstonia, disappeared around 11.8 million years ago, marking the end of an era. The Sebacids may be gone, but their legacy lives on. They were a testament to the resilience and adaptability of life on Earth, rising from the ashes of the dinosaurs to become the dominant predators of their time. And while mammals eventually took over, the Sebacids remind us that the age of reptiles didn't end with the dinosaurs. It simply evolved. If you enjoyed this journey through the rise and fall of the Sebacids, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into Earth's prehistoric past. And let us know in the comments, what other forgotten predators would you like us to explore next? Until next time, stay curious and remember, the past is never as distant as it seems.